What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Today, we are going camping. Now, it may not look like that because of where we are right now, but we decided that the camping spot that all the girls chose was inferior to my spearfishing spots. So, it was nearby, so instead, ditched them and decided to shoot up here and check another spot. So me and Sam are gonna go out here diving. We brought all of the ingredients that we need to make like a feast tonight, as long as we have fish. So we need fish. We have no idea what we're gonna find out here. We're looking for those moos, we're looking for those ukus. We're gonna go out here, we're gonna have a good time, but number one, priority number one, is enough food for like six people? Yeah. Six people? We need enough fish for like six people. If we do not find our more desirable species, our, our ukus and our moos. We're gonna start looking for those polanis. You guys have all commented before and said, try the polanis for your Chick-fil-A sandwich. So maybe that happens today. We'll see. Either way, we will see you guys in the water. So before this camping trip, we all kind of split up meals and me and Sam took dinner. So we brought basically all the ingredients for fish, but we had to go get the fish. And we both woke up feeling not so great. So when we got down here to our location and we swam out and we found it completely deserted, we were kind of freaking out. Sam at one point suggested even, we'll go we'll pick up a pizza, take it to the camping ground because that's how much we were struggling. So this spot is really, really, Cool. I like it a lot, but it seems to completely shut off without current. So I swam all the way out here to 80, 90 feet and really, really worked hard all day to collect enough fish to feed everybody for dinner. So got down here to the bouldery, deep side of the ledge, like you guys have seen me do a thousand times, looking for those moos, ukus, goats, whatever good to eat. So like I said, I wasn't feeling great. And look here how I rushed this shot. These fish were moving along. I guarantee if I would have sat here and waited, they would have come back around and given me a much better shot instead of me shooting a fish on the move and ending up getting it right there in the meat. Tried to ruin as much meat as oh possible. Oh my God. <laughs> So this next drop here, I've kind of already got goat fish on my mind. I'm like, goats would be awesome to cut up, fillet, and turn into those fish sandwiches. So that was kind of, kind of what I was looking for, but there was also a school of moo down here. Now, remember, I'm not feeling great, I'm not diving at my best, and I see the moo. And what happens here is that schooling fish effect, where like, you're not really sure what to shoot or what to do, and in the end here, you'll see me go up with nothing. So I drop my head, do my dusting, Gonna kind of do like a half-ass moo technique there. You'll see how I don't stay down there very long with my head in the sand. And when I start looking up, I can see those goats. And I'm thinking about the goats, but I really, really want the moo behind them. But because I only did like a half-ass moo technique, the moo are not gonna come into that. If you want the moo, you've gotta be committed, especially in an area like this, where they're just not that dumb. So I decide, okay, moo's not happening. Now I want a goat. And unfortunately, the goats were already kind of moving off. Now I'm moving my head all around. I'm doing all this kind of crazy movements and the moo are not gonna come anywhere near. I should have just committed to one of the goats at the beginning, taken him and had some more fish for dinner. Instead, I kind of the schooling fish effect kind of really screwed me up and I ended up going home with nothing. So next drop here, I'm in that same location and I'm gonna commit to the moo. And I do so much better when I when I do that to begin with. When I go down and I can see the moo from the surface and I say, this is gonna be a moo drop. I'm gonna do everything to the T to hopefully make that happen. You can see as I'm kind of getting to the bottom that I'm not exactly where I wanna be. And this is a technique you guys can all use where you just kind of level out and you glide over to your spot. Glide over to that little bit better hiding spot without kicking there. You know, if you were to go straight to the bottom and then you were to crawl over there, it would have been a lot more effort than if you just tilted your body and angled over and then landed right in that spot you were looking for. You can see I'm kind of tucked down there in between some boulders. I'm gonna do my dusting, kind of look down at the sand and really take my time and see if I can get some of those moo to come over and check me out. One of the things I like to do here when I'm looking down and trying to not look up 
is I'll really focus in on like the little sand grains or I'll look for teeny tiny little fish that live right down there in the sand, little gobies, anything to distract me from the fact that like the fish could be swimming all around my head. I could have a 30 pound uku looking at my head right now and I can't see him. So I sit down there, I try and wait as long as I can, and then I lift that head up as slowly as possible, and there they are. This technique works so freaking well, it just brings them in for whatever reason, they hate your face, they hate to be looked at. But if you sit down there and don't look at them, they come over and you can pick out kind of the mood that you're looking for, and then take the shot and land one of these pretty hard to hunt fish. There's a few fish sandwiches there, huh? <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> Come on, we need one more. You're done. You're done. Over it. I've definitely got it. Yeah, I guess I was too. Huh? I guess I was too. It's all right. One more fish, we're, we're done. That's good. You think Britt's actually going to pick us up? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> So I couldn't believe it, but right here, we had an Ono swim right underneath us. Now, I, like a total kook, had absolutely nothing to throw at him. No spoons, no opelus, nothing, and he just kind of cruised right on by, never looked back, and was gone. You see it? So this next dive here is a really good example of kind of a, a thought or a mentality that my buddy Chris Coates told me, and that is to hunt every fish in the school. So you're hunting all of the fish around you, not just the fish that's your target. And you'll see me do this here and completely screw it up. I'm sitting here, I'm looking for the moo, I've got my head down, I'm waiting to pick up another one. I've got one in the box already, I'm like, man, I would love to make some sandwiches out of these guys. So, do my moo technique, look down, but pay attention to kind of all of the fish that are around me when I look up. And when I go for that lunge, when I move forward just a little bit to close the gap with those moo, I end up spooking the teeniest, tiniest little fish, and it sets off like a ripple effect and spooks everything around, including those moo, that I, honestly, I should have had a shot at. So I locate my fish right here, I'm kinda looking for a handhold. That's what I do a lot, especially with that left hand. I see if I can get something that's solid that can help me propel off of the rock instead of kicking with my fins. Look right here though, teeny tiny little fish, I spook it and then everybody else spooks. And honestly, I should have had that shot there. He was well within range. I should have had two moo to take back to the camping site. So we had done a lot of dives now, and honestly, me and Sam were both completely over it. It was getting later and later, and we know we needed to get to the campsite and meet up with everybody else, but we weren't about to show up empty-handed. So I was really looking at these Polanis. I was thinking I was gonna do that, fillet those things up, try that out for once. You guys have all recommended that. Try the Polanis, try the Pualus, try some of those Uhus. Maybe I'll be surprised and, and like some of those just as much as I like these goats. But sitting down there again, waiting to see what comes in, and those big Moana Collies show up. And you guys know I love these things. They're just so delicious no matter how you cook them. And if you're sitting down here and you're patient and you wait, you can get these really, really good shots. As I dive more and more throughout the day, I start to feel a little bit better. I start to get more relaxed down there on the bottom. All those kind of techniques kind of come right back. And I'm able to sit there, wait, have these Moana Collies show up, take my time, they'll pause, and then I'll take the exact shot I'm looking for on one of these bigger fish. So as usual, as you get to the end of your dive, you always kind of find those better areas with more fish. And that's exactly what happened to me on this day. You know, Sam was ready to go home, I was kind of ready to go home, but I just kept finding better and better areas with more fish, and it was tough to leave them. You'll see how much more life is right here than on a lot of those dives that I had early. I'm getting much, much more relaxed, I'm kind of easing into my day, feeling really good, looking for these moos, and there was a couple really, really solid moo in this kind of pile here, and that's really what I was looking for, but Sam, told me one more dive and we are leaving. We're out of here. Shoot something, don't shoot anything. I don't care, we're going camping. So down there on the bottom, I'm resolved to shoot something. I don't care what it is. And I saw this giant Ali, he kind of pop out of the corner right there. And I gave him a real hard look 
and I was gonna do it, but then I remembered last time, I'm honestly, guys, I can look at my finger right now, I'm still cut up from the last time that I tried to fillet one of these things. So then that goat pops up over there, nice big Moana Kali, the biggest one of the day, and I decided this is it. Chick-fil-A Uku is coming up, it's happening, except today we're doing with goats. Look right here, this is a really good example of why I use Dyneema. When those fish get stuck down there in the rock, I will just pull it out. I don't want to go back down there again. I don't want to have to go and recover this fish. Instead, I'll just pull it out all in one dive, so I'm ready to get out of there, do another dive, or go home. Sam, what happened? Explain. My friend with the truck. That one. Yeah. Failed us. <laughs> Completely Left failed us. us on the side of the road. Abandoned us on the side of the road with all of our stuff. We're going camping. She's supposed to pick us up at the top of the road. Completely abandons us. <laughs> so now, she was good enough to come to the top of the road here and help us carry all of our debris down to the bottom of the road. <laughs> Guys, if anybody out there has got some <laughs> truck sponsorships, Went hit me bear. up because we need one so bad because that little thing is just not cutting it anymore. How was so, my bar last night, right? So we've made it. It was not easy. We made it all the way down here to camp and morale was low. I'm not gonna lie. Like that was a serious mission. And then I got here and I had just the perk that I needed. Check this out. That one! That girl right there! Guys, I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. That was just a little pick me up that I needed. <laughs> Sam, can I have my beer back? Thank you so much. And guys, we are ready to party. Struggle of a dive. I was having flashbacks to a couple days ago when the same kind of pressure was on. Like, we got dinner tonight. We've got to get some fish. We brought all the ingredients. All we needed was fish. So, went out there, stuck it out, dove that 90 to 100 foot ledge all day. Managed to get these three beautiful monocollies. Beautiful little moo there. I'm gonna fillet up everything and we're gonna turn it into that magical Chick fil A fish sandwich. Here's the thing with fried fish and camping it is super easy to pack your panko and pack your egg and bring it. You don't have to worry about veggies getting crushed, you don't have to worry about keeping things cold. It's fine, it's easy, it's simple. Frying shit in the fire is as easy as it gets, so we're simplifying it tonight and we're going with fried fish sandwiches. However, we have a new toy, and we will introduce you to that new toy in a few minutes after I get these things filleted, marinated, 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 put the marinade on them, <laughs> marinate them. Marinated. Marinated? After I marinate. After I marinate. In the marinade. After I marinate in the marinade. There you go. Right? Yeah, you got okay, it Okay, so I'm gonna marinate in the marinade, and then we're gonna introduce you guys to our new toy, which I'm pretty excited about. That is. There's a lot of parts. Uh oh. I was not expecting so many parts. Holy crap! Some assembly required. Sam, how's it look? They look amazing, actually. They look amazing? Oh, yeah, they do. Scale of 1 to 10? Definitely a 10, at least. 11, 12. Don't give them that much credit. I mean, that's really nice. good. Double fried Chick-fil-A <laughs> sauce. Sam, what do we got? What do we got going on? Happiness? Damn. Brit! It's terrible. Brit and Ryan are in a very deep <laughs> argument. We hate each other. Nothing that Brit says is, is admissible in this video. Okay.
Hot. How hot? Hot, hot. Guys, you have no idea how hard. You guys thought the last video I worked hard for my chicken sandwich? This, yeah, this is like, and you have no idea. Good. You have no idea. Like, oh, no, no, unbelievably no. hard. Did you cut up mm. <laughs> and then through everything with the fire, went hiking back with Samogram, with the big waves coming in shore, with the, the burner that catches on fire every 10 seconds. I don't know what's wrong with it, guys. This is freaking fantastic. Good. Nice. Guys, that was a serious camping mission there. Woke up the next morning to bacon, cooking over an open fire, Brit's gun still loaded, and then a flat tire. Make sure you're subscribed, because next week, we're gonna show you this monster. We're gonna smoke him up somehow, if you have any suggestions on how to smoke this guy up and what to do with him, let me know down in the comments below. We will see you next time right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.